Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. There were a lot of people around the table that night. Jesus and his closest companions filled our tiny house almost to bursting point, and a cacophony of voices rose high into the clear night air. Ever since Martha, my practical older sister, had known of their coming, she had been cooking and cleaning. She is so faithful and loyal, stepping into the role of parent since well, it has been hard on all of us, but maybe more for Martha. There is money enough to live on, but not for a dowry. No wonder she is sharp with me at times, when my daydreaming gets in the way of my chores. But her heart is good, and she always gives of herself in everything she does. Thanks to her, that particular night was a great success. The wine was flowing and the food was plentiful. There were tensions in the air, but I don't think many of us realised it would be the last time we would eat together. Martha's skirt rustled as she moved amongst our friends, offering respite and sustenance. And sitting where I was, tucked into my favourite corner by the fire, I caught drifts of the conversation. There were rising levels of hostility towards Jesus from the authorities. But I don't think his friends quite got where it was going. I watched, surrounded by those who had lived with him for the past three years. Jesus turned his head to look in my direction. Our eyes met, and for me the noise and activity in the room ceased. Along with his hands, his eyes were one of his most striking features. When he looked at you, it was as if he was connecting with your very soul. Beautiful, dark, full of compassion. But tonight there was something more. Sadness I could not quite place. I will never forget his last visit to us. Lazarus, our beloved brother, had been suffering from a long and painful illness. We had sent word to Jesus to come, but for some reason he stayed away. On the day Lazarus died, Martha and I felt as though we were drowning in an overwhelming sea of grief. And when Jesus finally came, four days later, I was in no fit state to leave the house. Martha, however, ran out to meet him, and true to her nature, took him straight to where our brother was buried. By the time I joined them, he was calling Lazarus out of his tomb, and to my utter astonishment, out he came, still wrapped in his burial clothes. We all knew it then, the glory of God was standing beside us. Jesus, my friend, was the one whom our people had been waiting for, the one whose presence the prophet Isaiah had foretold. I searched my mind. What was it that he had said? I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare, before they spring up. I tell you of them. His eyes were still on me. I loved him. That went without question. And I had sat at his feet on so many occasions, I knew he loved me too. No words passed between us. But I could tell he was asking me to sit there one more time. And for what reason? Quietly, 
I reached for the small jar of oil that I had bought from the market. It had taken everything I had. It had cost me the outrage of my sister, who called it an extravagant waste of our limited resources. But none of that seemed important anymore. I crossed the room and knelt before Jesus. His eyes were still on me as I gently poured the oil over his feet. Nard was the most expensive and luxurious of oils, used for anointing kings and priests into service and the dying into their death. Silently, as the heady fragrance filled the room, I wiped the excess oil away with my hair and reflected on what it all meant. He is king because it is through him all life came into being. And it is he who has the authority to sit in judgment over that same life at the end of time. He is priest because as a visible glory of the invisible God, he stands between heaven and earth an offering of reconciliation between eternal and created life. My hair takes on the perfume and I take on a new understanding. Jesus, as king and priest, is going to Jerusalem to die and I am to anoint him for this final act. I closed my eyes and surrendered to this most sacred truth. I remembered the words of the psalmist, with you is the fountain of light. In your light shall we see light. O God, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright of heart. To the side of me, I could hear Judas complaining about what I had done. And I prayed for him to open his heart to these ancient words, but feared they would come too late. For the others though, and for our world, I still had hope. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.